guys, I'm back from my vacation and just scanning through the headlines, <laughs> looks like I could use another one. I'll leave you for five minutes and you burn the place down. Incredibly fun episode today though, we're talking about Syria. Part of the reason I chose to do this topic is that, and I don't say this lightly, but for the amount of news coverage it's gotten, the underlying story of what's happening has been very poorly reported. It's hard to know what's going on, but really easy to be very angry about it. Now, I recently did an episode where I laid out all of the events that led to the map we have today in Syria, but unfortunately that episode, much like that map I was using, needs a bit of revising. If you want a comprehensive understanding of how we got here though, I recommend you check that out, link at the end. For now though, what the heck is going on? The problem is mostly revolving around a hazy agreement between the United States, Turkey and the Kurds in late August. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been pushing to get Syria's Kurds away from the border. He has now gotten the U.S. to help him through the creation of a so-called safe zone. Yeah, that safe zone? Not very safe right now. My goal this week is to try to explain how that safe zone agreement went south faster than the new Turkish invading forces. First we need to take a few steps back and break down the already very broken down Syria. Cue the map. Already you can probably see that this is a civil war turducken with independence movements out the wazoo. And of course America just needed to cram itself right up in there. We first have the Syrian civil war between the government of Syria led by Russian and Iranian backed Bashar al-Assad and the pro-democracy group making their final stand in Idlib. People think that civil war, the one that triggered this whole conflict, is almost over. Honestly, this will never come up again, so I'm just giving you a geographic breakdown. Then you have the newly formed Kurdistan that during the pro-democracy uprising and civil war saw a weakened Syrian government and decided to jump ship and start their own country, taking land from Assad's Syria and ISIS territories. Kurdistan is where America set up most of its camps. It also, unfortunately, happens to be land comprising the entire border between former Syria and Turkey. Let me tell you, Turkey is less than thrilled about their new neighbors wouldn't hold my breath for that welcome basket. Turkey is pretty worried because, well, this land is claimed by the Kurds because of their large populations in these locations. And well, a lot of that land is currently in Turkey. Now Turkey can currently suppress their own Kurdish independence movements, but so could Syria until the civil war broke out. This brings us to an incredibly important question that our diplomats were asking themselves a month ago when the Syrian civil war between pro-democracy groups and Assad was winding down. With the Syrian civil war coming to a close and Syria and Kurdistan becoming independent states, how do we maintain this border with Turkey that is somehow more contentious than the border with Syria? Well, here's some good news that came out about a month ago. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says a new safe zone in northeastern Syria will create an area where his government can repatriate Syrian refugees. He also wants to keep this safe zone in place to prevent Kurdish militants from approaching the southern border. All right, so setting up a safe space along the Kurdish-Turkish border. Sounds like a surprisingly rational place to start this conversation. Even more conveniently, both sides agreed that this was a good solution. The smell of peace was in the air. So what the heck happened? Well, the devil's in the details. Now he said he was determined to establish the zone by now, the end of September, but his government and the United States have different ideas about how big the zone should be. Erdogan says he'll act alone if there's no agreement. <laughs> Turkey unilaterally moving in to set up a safe zone on their own terms? That'll never happen, America confidently said to itself a month ago. For this next part, let's get out our calendar, because man did a lot of really contradictory things happen in quick succession. This is probably the best way to paint a picture of what everybody wants, although fair warning, this picture is pretty abstract. We start our story on August 22nd, when America and Turkey agreed to start their Syria safe zone plan. 
This involved joint patrols of Turkish and United States soldiers. Unfortunately, while that was happening, negotiations on the scope and implementation were still ongoing, with the main sticking point being the size of the zone. Now you're probably thinking, well great, now we have Americans and Turks coming together to violate this third country's sovereignty. Diplomacy. Not exactly though, as on August 27th, Kurdish authorities in northeastern Syria say their forces have started to withdraw from outposts along the Turkish border after the United States and Turkey reached a deal to establish a safe zone there earlier in this month. It was a real, well, that was easier than I expected moment. Similarly, Kurds destroyed their fortifications within the first 17 kilometers of the border. Spoiler alert, but man, they're about to really regret that choice. Unfortunately, Turkey has long pressed for a 30 to 40 kilometer border zone with Syria, while the United States has tried to limit it to 10 kilometers. I'm surprised Trump couldn't be a little more helpful here though. So you're trying to protect your southern border. Have you tried an alligator moat and shooting border crosses in the legs yet? So we were entering September with the Kurdish army having completely withdrawn 14 kilometers and joint US Turkish patrols. It was a pretty optimistic time. Six Turkish armored vehicles crossed the border to join US troops in Syria for their first patrol under a deal reached between Washington and Ankara last month. The agreement aims to establish a safe zone between the Turkish border and areas east of the Euphrates River in Syria that are controlled by the Kurdish People's Protection Units. Still, there was the looming awkward question in the back of everyone's head. We're doing these joint patrols of northern Syria, but Turkey thinks that the area we're patrolling should be twice as large. It was a really awkward situation, like your Tinder date saying they're looking for a marriage partner. America was like, whoa, 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 be cool Erdogan, we have time, let's just start with some patrols, get the lay of the land and then see what happens. At the same time though, we were definitely using caller ID to duck some of Turkey's calls. While Erdogan was in New York for a week to speak to the UN, he was unable to nail down a meeting with Trump to figure all this out. Oh, you were in the neighborhood? I didn't realize. Sorry, my phone was off that week. On the Turkish side though, oh, they just straight up gave us an ultimatum. Turkey's deadline to jointly establish a safe zone with the United States in northern Syria by the end of September has passed, leaving the threat of a unilateral military intervention by Ankara hanging over the region. Basically, if we can't figure this out with America, well then we're just going to figure it out on our own. Of course, in this case, figuring out would be using the military to push the Kurdish military back an additional 15 kilometers to a point where Turkey is satisfied. America's response to this was essentially just saying, yeah, you guys don't have the balls. Sorry. Diplomats and analysts say Erdogan would be unwilling to anger the United States with a full-scale military incursion when Ankara's relationships with Washington are already under strain. Then, well, I think you know what happened next. Trump has faced intense criticism at home and abroad after Turkey invaded to create what it claims is a safe zone on the Syrian side of the border. Yes, they invaded the top 30 kilometers or 20 miles of Kurdistan in order to set up this safe zone. Now let's be clear, I'm giving you an incredibly whitewashed version of this, but this is definitely bombing and street fighting wars through and through to clear this 20 mile safe zone of Kurdish fighters. Of course, this brings us to the question that most reporters start every story with. How can I connect all of this back to Donald Trump? I'm sure you've consistently heard that he betrayed the Kurds. And yeah, this is where things get real inconsistent in this administration. Well, for the entire month of September, we were saying, don't invade northern Syria. On October 6th, Trump's press secretary released this press release. Today, President Donald Trump spoke with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey by telephone. Turkey will soon be moving forward with its long planned operation into northern Syria. 
And with that, well, the invasion happened, and Turkey was allowed to create the safe zone entirely on their own terms. Man, if only Trump could have kept ducking Erdogan's gods for another few weeks. I mean, come on, don't you guys have caller ID over at the White House? It went on to announce that the United States Armed Forces will not support or be involved in the operation, and the United States Forces having defeated the ISIS territorial caliphate will no longer be in the immediate area. So this brings us to today, because the story hasn't quite ended yet. Mike Pence recently came out of wherever Trump keeps him tucked away to announce a ceasefire between Turkey and the United States and Kurds. From this clip to make sense, you need to know that the Turkish invasion is referred to as Operation Peace Spring. Well, it's hard to say that one without sounding a bit sarcastic. Turkish side will pause Operation Peace Spring in order to allow for the withdrawal of YPG forces from the safe zone for 120 hours. All military operations under Operation Peace Spring will be paused, and Operation Peace Spring will be halted entirely on completion of the withdrawal. Basically, hey Turkey, remember everything you told us you wanted and we said we weren't going to give you? Surprise, we got it for you! We didn't have time to gift wrap it, but here you go. We have 120 hours to remove all Kurdish forces from the invaded territories. And while we're doing that, Turkey has graciously agreed not to shoot them in the back as they leave. Now, if you think this is in any way an exaggeration, here's The Economist to summarize this deal. Under the deal, the Kurdish fighters known as the People's Protection Units are expected to withdraw to at least 30 kilometers from the border while Turkish troops and their Syrian proxies hold their fire for 120 hours. In return, America would shelve the sanctions it had imposed against Mr. Erdogan's government on October 14th. You know, just in case we need to sweeten the deal a bit more. Of course, Erdogan, if you're not satisfied yet, don't worry. The Kurds would also surrender their heavy weapons they received from the Americans to wage war against the Islamic State, and of course the Kurds would also have to dismantle their fortifications. I mean, geez, why not just throw in Hawaii while we're at it, as we desperately try to rectify this situation. Of course, Kurdish commanders have said they would accept the ceasefire, but only in some areas. The fighting has not stopped yet. As of this reporting, I can say that the AP is reporting that a senior Syrian Kurdish official says his forces will pull back from a border area in accordance with a US brokered deal, after Turkey allows the evacuation of its remaining fighters and civilians from a besieged town there. It will withdraw and move back to the border 30 kilometers away, or 19 miles. So that's exactly what happened in Syria right now. Almost wish I didn't know that. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey, Facebook viewers, if you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, why don't you come over and join our That's All I Have to Say About That Facebook group? And don't forget to share so everyone can learn. Hello, YouTube. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news, remember.